Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Anshu Dodej. I'm working as technical architect at Adobe and here I present day 19th of August Lead Code Challenge and for your surprise, after so many days, I'm witnessing a question that I haven't solved in the past. The problem statement is a very interesting problem and you will also feel the same once we will go through the entire solution. Uh, the problem is split array into consecutive subsequences and again, it's a medium level question. Uh, it's very interesting. I'll be explaining you the question as well as the solution why the presentation. So let's quickly hop onto it. Split array into consecutive subsequences. Lead code 659. It's a medium level question and I totally feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general. So please feel free to join the telegram group of Coding Decoded. We guys have a wonderful conversations about job opportunities, problem solving and it's a very interactive uh, telegram group and I promise once you will join, you will enjoy the conversations thoroughly. Without further ado, let's quickly move to understanding the question. The question says you are given numbers that are in, present in sorted order. So remember, all the numbers are there in the sorted order. What do we need to do? We need to create groups of sizes that have length equals to 3 or greater than 3. So this is another important point that you should remember that the size of each group or subsequence should be greater than or equal to 3 and each element in the group should be consecutive in nature. So there should not be case where the elements in that particular subset or group are non-consecutive in nature. So keeping these constraints in mind, let's quickly understand it by one of the examples that was also specified in the question and the example happens to be this one. We have elements as 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, double 5. So first of all, let's try and evaluate whether it's possible to divide all these elements into groups with given constraints or not. So the question said that the size of each group should be greater than or equal to 3. And the second constraint was all the elements within the group should be consecutive in nature. So let's start. So the first group that looks very intuitive happens to be this one, which is 1, 2 and 3 because all the numbers are consecutive in nature and we are still not sure whether this group is complete or not but the bare minimum criteria is fulfilled it has three elements the element so far is consecutive in nature let's proceed further and the next group that could be formed is of is using elements 3 4 and 5 so let's create another group which is of 3 4 and 5 now comes the concern do we have any remaining elements or not let's try and evaluate it we guess we have two remaining elements which is one is 4 and other one is 5. Now comes the interesting concern whether these two elements can be fit in in any of these two groups that have been formed so far and we haven't closed the size of these groups. Why? Because in the question it said that th the minimum size should be 3. There can be more elements in any of these groups. So if you carefully analyze if we put 4 and 5 over here as part of this particular group which is the first one then we you will see that all the five elements will be utilized one two three four five and this forms the completion of one particular group group four and five can be collated together as a result of which it makes a successful permutation and hence we will return true in all those cases where we are successfully able to form groups with given constraint as per the equation had there been a case there would have been 10 over here then if you carefully analyze and then you will see that 10 cannot be part of these any of these two groups as a result of which we had to return false as the answer so there are only two possibilities of answer one is whether the configuration is possible then we will say true otherwise if the configuration is not possible then we will say false now comes the concern how can we algorithmize this up so if you carefully analyze then you will see that while iterating over the input array, every number ca can be part of an either can be part of one of the existing groups or it can start a new group in itself. So what I'm trying to say, you will get to know in some time, but remember for each and every number, there are two possibilities. Either it will be the starting point or it will be creating a new group or it would be getting added to an already existing group. That brings in a very important concept of availability and vacancy. So we will be storing all those numbers that are available for utilization in our availability map and we will store all those numbers that we are looking out for for whom the vacancy has been created in the vacancy map what i'm trying to say let's try and evaluate it by and by the same test case and let's start over this map 
the first and the foremost thing that I'm going to do is to create the availability map. So I'll name it A M and that means it's the availability map. So what, how many numbers are in total there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers are there. And let's count the frequency of each and every number that exists in our input array. So the first number happens to be one. One has a frequency one, two has a frequency one, three has a frequency two, four has a frequency two, and five has a frequency two again. Parallelly, we'll also create another map named as vacancy map. And let me just name it VM. So it will store all those elements for whom the vacancies has been created. And those elements could be part of the groups that we have formed so far. What we are trying, what I'm trying to say, let's walk through the same example that I have just talked and let's start the iteration from the very first element. So the very first element happens to be one. The first and the foremost thing that I'm going to do is to check the availability of one in the availability map. What is the frequency of one in the availability map? It, it, the frequency is one. That means the number is available for utilization. Moving ahead, I check whether this one number is being looked out for to be part of any of the existing groups or not. No groups have been formed so far. That means this nobody is looking out for this element and it's time to create the very first group using one when we are creating the very first group using one what do we do we simply check whether the element one plus one one plus one one plus two are also available for utilization or not because in the question it is specified that each group should have a minimum size of three and the number should be consecutive in nature. So the first element would be one itself. The second number would be one plus one, which is two. And the third number would be one plus two, which is three. In short, it means that we are looking for availability of three numbers. The first number is one. The second number is two and the third number is three. So what are the availability of one, two and three, whether it is greater than zero or not, the availability of one is one, the availability of two is one and availability of three is two. That means all three numbers are available as a result of which we will be going ahead and forming the first group, which is one, two and three. Along with that, what we should be doing, we should be reducing the, the, the frequencies of each of these elements from the availability map. So the frequency of one gets updated to zero. The frequency of two also gets updated to zero and the frequency of three gets updated to one. Along with that, another important aspect that we should be taking care of is that we will be creating a new vacancy for element four because there could be cases that this group can also accommodate four in future if needed. The bare minimum criteria for forming the group has been fulfilled. However, there could be case that four can be become part of this group as a result of which four will be created as a new element in the vacancy map and the frequency of four would be one. So far, so good. Let's proceed ahead to the next element. And let me just write dot 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 over here because a vacancy has been created. We can close it if needed or we can add four onto it. The next element that we have happens to be two. What do we do? We check whether this number is available for usage in the availability map or not. The number frequency happens to be zero. That means the number is unavailable. Let's proceed ahead. The element that we have happens to be three. So again, we'll look out for the frequency of three in the availability map. So what is the frequency of three in the availability map? It is greater than zero. That means this element is available for usage. Now again, we are going to check whether is any group asking for this three element. We'll check whether three as a key is part of the vacancy map or not. If you carefully analyze, there is no entry with three as the key in the vacancy map. That means no group is actually looking out for element three. As a result of which there's only one option left with three is to start another new group because nobody is asking for three in the existing group. The only possibility remains is to create a new group using three in order to create a new group using three. What are the constraints that were specified in the question? The first constraint was the minimum size should be three and all the elements should be consecutive in nature. Therefore, we look out for the availability of three, four and five in the availability map. So let's do that and three is available, four is available, so does five. And hence we will create another group with elements three, four and five. 
along with that we will be creating another vacancy for element 6 6 could be added as part of this particular group in future if needed let's go ahead and create a new group we are consuming 3 4 and 5 therefore we will have to reduce their frequencies by 1 the frequency of 3 gets reduced to 0 so let's update 0 the frequency of 4 gets reduced to 1 the frequency of 5 gets reduced to 1 again and let's continue the iteration and let's keep this group open-ended as well because more elements can be accommodated in future if needed the next element that we have happens to be 3 what is the frequency of 3 in the availability map it is 0 therefore we should be skipping this up this number is not available for usage let's proceed ahead next we have 4 so we will check whether this number is available for usage or not this number is available for usage it has the frequency 1 now what we will be checking we will be checking the first and the foremost thing whether it can become part of an existing group or not for checking this up we should be looking out for the vacancy map do we have an entry for 4 in our vacancy map yes we have an entry for 4 as a result of which 4 will be getting added onto this particular group since 4 is getting added to this particular group we should be reducing the frequency of 4 by 1 so the frequency of 4 gets reduced to 0 and along with that we should be removing this entry from the vacancy map and a new vacancy is getting created for the element 5 5 can be accommodated as part of this particular group if needed in future therefore we should be creating a new entry with element 5 comma 1 so remember this is a very important aspect of the algorithm if you are consuming uh, an already existing vacancy created element then you should be creating another brick vacancy for the next subsequent element we are consuming 4 we should be creating another vacancy for 5 because because it can be accommodated as part of this group itself let's proceed ahead the next element that we see happens to be 5 and we check whether 5 is available for usage or not yes 5 happens to be available for usage its frequency is 1 we again check whether in the vacancy map it is it is present or not yes it is present in the vacancy map as well therefore 5 will be getting hooked onto this particular group the vacancy will be getting reduced to 0 and a new vacancy for element 6 will be getting created 6 is already part of the vacancy map therefore we will we'll update the frequency to 2 and with this we have successfully iterated over all the elements and as a result of which we can put closure on these groups so the first group that gets formed is 1 2 3 4 5 and the next group that gets formed is 3 4 and 5 in order to conclude it up let's quickly walk through the coding section and i hope you guys understood the entire algorithm i'll be exactly doing the same steps as i have just talked here so let's get started the first thing that i have done here is to create the availability map which will basically store the frequency of each and every element passed in the input array and the next map that I have created is the vacancy map. Now comes the code algorithm starting from line 13. So we'll be iterating over the input array one by one uh, in an iterative fashion. i equals to zero, i is less than nums dot length, i plus plus. And the first and the foremost thing that we are going to check is whether the number is available for consumption or not. In case that in the availability map, its frequency is less than or equal to zero, we abort the process and we look out for the next possible element that exists in our input array if the number is available then what do we do the first and the foremost thing is to check whether somebody is looking out for that particular element to be added in the group or not so that information will be retrieved from the vacancy map and we check whether in the vacancy map corresponding to that particular element the frequency is greater than zero or not if it is greater than zero that means any of the group is looking out for that particular element to be added and as a result of which the first thing that i am going to do is to reduce the frequency of that particular element from the availability map and along with that i will be up creating a new vacancy for nums plus one in the vacancy map itself why because a new vacancy is getting created as we saw in the case of four and five and the frequency of four will get reduced by one which has been done at line 21 so if you are basically reducing the frequency in the vacancy map for that particular element and creating a new vacancy for nums plus one in the vacancy map for future consumption and in case 
uh, there was no vacancy of that particular element in the vacancy map at line number 18 it retreat false then that means it's time to create a new group for creating the new group the minimum size should be 3 and the numbers should be consecutive in nature so we look out for the availability of nums uh, at the ith index in the availability map if it is greater than 0 nums plus 1 is greater than 0 nums plus 2 is greater than 0 if all three are greater than 0 then we simply reduce their frequencies in the availability map and along with that we create a new vacancy in the vacancy map for the element nums plus 3 so this is the same case while we were creating the group starting from 1 2 and 3 a vacancy was getting created for 4 so this has been taken care at line number 33 if none of the conditions are met and it's not possible to consume an element we simply abort the process and return false if we are successfully able to iterate over all the elements we simply return true so let me just submit this up accepted 42 percent faster i am connected to vpn but that's all right uh, the time complexity of this approach is order of n because we are iterating over the nums array once twice basically and it's pretty straightforward and the space complexity is also order of n with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you thoroughly enjoyed it and understood the algo if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel guys it really means the world to me and i'm looking forward to having conversations with all of you in the telegram group